Hello, hello, happy Friday. Oh, my light is making a big shadow. I mean, oh my God, it's not even Friday. What am I saying? <laughs> what is today? Wednesday. Hello, if you can hear me, please drop a one in the chat. Let me know where you're coming in from. Let me know what you're sipping on. I've got Diet Coke. I also have some water. Don't shame me. Sugar Bear drank water from a cup tonight. When I get a second, I will make a little reel about that. I see two people in here. Can you hear me? Testing, testing, one, two, three. If you can hear me, please drop a one in the chat while we're waiting for that. Hello, Lisa. Hey, Dia Smiley B Face. Um, NYC not slipping. Hey, Red Blonde Chick. Um, Dallas. Whoop, whoop. I just, oh, I was talking to my cousin early this morning. She just came back from Dallas. Or maybe it was Houston. She was somewhere in Texas. Hello, hello, Asia, Aja, Shim Anderson. Hey, okay, you guys can all hear me. Um, how's everybody doing tonight? Hey, MK Bryce. Oh my God, we got a lot of people on. So as you see from my thumbnail, there was light in the back in the background behind me because I was gonna go live earlier, but things got away from me. So I have spent all day on. Well, let me not say all day. Let me not be dramatic because I didn't get up till one. We didn't get up till one, meaning exiting the room and trying to do stuff. Um, so from one until like six, I've been on the phone, like going over different benefit stuff. Everybody was super nice. Thank God. Um, it was just a lot of phone transfers and whatnot uh, because like my employer, we don't get to talk directly to the insurance. I can submit my claims directly to the insurance. But as far as like coverage, the it, I'm sure it's a cost savings thing, whatever, however they have it worked out. We don't talk directly to Independence Blue Cross. We now go through this other company called Included Health. It used to be Accolade, now it's Included Health. So they transferred me like five times because I was calling about, is the doula going to be covered, right? Because you guys had mentioned that to me yesterday and I kept saying, oh yeah, I'm going to check, I'm going to check. So I finally did check and the doula is covered. I didn't ask what the amount of the coverage was. I mean, it doesn't really matter because I will be submitting it now as um, out of network because I guess had I known, I would have checked before and found somebody who was in network and they could have given me references, which I don't know why I didn't think of that before because that would have been so helpful. Here I am Googling like doula. So, I mean, it worked out as it should. I got the doula that I needed to have. Um, but if anybody else is out there in the wait or if you're currently pregnant, definitely ask your employer about those, um, like what's going to be covered for you. Um, I think I kept telling them, like I got transferred three or four times. They didn't know where to put me. I think one, because of my age, you know, you have to keep giving your birthday. And so the lady was like, so what kind of services, like, what do you need a doula for? I was like, I've already paid the doula. So I had, um, prenatal and antenatal care. And then she was like, well, what does she do? And I was like, doula services, you know, ma'am. <laughs> like, it's either yes or no, you guys cover it, or the insurance covers it or not. Um, but anyway, yeah, so they do cover it. So I had to reach back out to, actually, I need to reach out to Shamika because her postpartum care, I paid her directly, but the, or the antenatal care, however you want to say it, I paid her directly. You want to say hi to the people? Hello. This one's Liberty, who I need to... Both of them need a bath, but I need to do something with her hair. I'm going to try to pigtail them. Okay, get down. Anyway, so um, the original agency, I sent them a note asking them for a super bill because it has to have like the codes in there. And then I need to send Shamika one that, you know, I need a bill. Well, one, I need it for insurance. Uh, I mean, I need it for taxes anyway, so I should have asked for it, but I wasn't. Listen, I had a lot going on, but so that's the good news that is covered. And then I was also digging more into the benefits. I think I told you guys I have bright horizon coverage and you get 30 a year, but 30 days a year that are covered. And by covered it's, there's a copay of $15. So I was, I was trying to figure out what I'm exactly doing for December. And so I was thinking, well, let me put in the numbers if I do all, um, bright horizon. And it's basically, I'm doing the backup care facility. So it's like, if you have something going on or something happens, like maybe some, your regular sitter person who comes to your house is not available or your daycare is not available, right? Like maybe they observe 
Indigenous People Day. I almost said Columbus Day. Indigenous People Day, and but the um, your employer doesn't, right? So you need coverage that day. So you go to backup care. So I get 30 days of backup care. It's not prorated. So I found that out today. So it would cost me if I put him in Bright Horizons right downstairs at work all of December, it would be like $395, which is super cheap. And then I would get reimbursed. Well, not reimbursed. I guess I've prepaid myself because I would put in like $500 in dependent care prepaid tax, you know how you can allocate money like for your flexible spending account and for your um, child care expenses. So I put it in for $500. So basically like I've already paid for it, but they don't give you a card, like a credit card with the dependent care like they do with the FSA. So I would have to pay it and then submit reimbursal. Like it's kind of weird because I'm being reimbursed with my own money, but it's tax. Um, it's pre-tax. So there is a savings in there. Anything I can get pre-tax, I'll take it because then that's more money in my check every month uh, versus after taxes. So yeah, um, so that is sorted out. So yeah, three ninety five dollars for a whole month is not bad because if you go through like a regular Bright Horizons account, you would end up spending like in excess of $4,000 for the whole month. So I was like, that might work he would be downstairs, but I still also as part of my benefits, as part of the bright horizon benefits, we get a free premium membership to sitter city. Have you guys heard of that? There's like sitter city, sitter, and then urban sitter. Excuse me. I had been looking at urban sitter before, but premium means I don't have to pay to talk. I, I, I mean, I guess that's how they make their money. You can see the providers on there, but you can't talk to them until you upgrade to premium. So as part of my benefits, I get a free premium. So I'm going to start interviewing people through that side. I had already put in a listing and like, but like I did it last night. And by the time I woke up, like I had 15, well, one o'clock, uh, by the time I got to my computer, I had like 15 people who already responded. So my gut tells me I kind of want to do a mix um, just because I don't want him to get too used to the backup center because then he's going to a whole new center in January um, where he'll go full time. But we'll see. Atlanta ATL. OK, I'm going to stay off the 285 um, and and get on the connector um, from Roseville, California to Dallas. Oh, nice. How has that been? It's an adjustment. So my cousin wants to move. I, she wants to go to Houston for sure. She's in Las Vegas. So she wants to go. She's thinking about um, Houston. What did you move um, for a job? Hi there. Is it Thais? Thais? Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Blame it on my head, not on my heart. Um, he'll be at your job. I think all jobs should offer on-site child care. I think, um, I know this is... So Bright Horizons is not like a part of our company. It's a benefit because I know when I was in LA and I worked at Boston Consulting, they also offered like larger corporations usually offer like Bright Horizons. Um, at least in my experience, I've worked at smaller places that didn't have it on my light. It's not going to cooperate. Bless you. Bless you. You're sneezing over there. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's nice to have the backup daycare, like 30, and you can call the day of and look for, there's multiple uh, locations too. I just want to do the one that's inside of 30 Rock. So I can just go downstairs and maybe have lunch with him or just go check on him. Um, but yeah, so for sure, the end of November, he's going there those days. And then I'm going to figure out, should I do all 30 days in the backup care or should I do like any mini money mo? And the backup care, it will also cover um, someone coming to your house. Like it's 30 days max, uh, actually, because it keeps track of it. Yeah, because you book it in the same system. So it's 30 days max. So you can have someone at your house. Like if your child is sick, right, and you don't want to take them out to, um, well, I don't think you can anymore. But they don't go to daycare because I heard daycare is like a bevy of germs, which freaks me out. But if they don't want to, you know, if the school won't take them, then you can have someone come into the home through Sitter City and it'll be covered um, less the $15 copay by the um, insurance. So I thought that was cool. I moved for a job and to be closer to my family. I miss California weather. I'm sure you do. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to get back to California in the next five years. So we'll see how that works out. I got to get the job first. Um for full-time workers to have daycare on site. I wonder if we could get that started. Like that would be, 
yeah, you could just pop in, right? Especially that first year. Um, I mean, I guess all the years, but especially that first year, I feel most nervous about that. Like once he's a little more vocal and walking, I'll feel like if there's a situation, he can say like something bad happened. But all of the places that I've looked at also support sign language. So I like that as well. Obviously, baby sign language is not full sign language, but they can tell you things, you know, like if they need their diaper change, if they want more, if they don't like something. Um, hey, love, love, how are you doing? I dug out my big uh, Sterilite box after you left that message. I'm using it to... Um, declutter my pantry. So any food that wasn't expired went into that Sterilite and then food that was expired went into a cardboard box and then into trash bags. <laughs> so I'm making good use of it. I don't really have room for more than one of them in here though, because once they're empty, where do they go? Um, so yeah, that was kind of my, and then I was on the phone with like, oh my God, round and round. So Sedgwick handles are FMLA. I'm switching from the employer FMLA to the state FMLA. So as of last week, however, the MetLife is the one who pays it out for the company and they didn't have my paperwork. So I was like kind of freaking out about that. But then as long as they get it sorted out by next Tuesday, it's fine because they pay it out weekly. Um, but my payments will not be like my full paycheck. I think it's like 67%. It's not, it's going to end up being like 50% for me because they max out at a dollar amount. So, but it's fine. It's that or childcare. Do you know what I mean? It ends up being the same. So I would rather be at home with him than meaning if I went in to work and got my full check, I would still be paying a lot more for childcare than I am like right now, childcare is free, right? So once I start going and I have the full childcare, that's like $3,400 a month. So might as well stay home with him for a little bit longer and enjoy the time, right? Do you wanna say hi to the ladies real fast? You wanna show them that you were driving a train today? You got on your conductor outfit, you say hi. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you trying to look at Liberty, wait, let me see. Um, There we go, you say hello. See, I got on my overalls. I got on my overalls. They're almost <laughs> too little. <laughs> See, because I'm so tall. Huh? I'm so tall. But that's okay. I'm only around the house, so it's okay. Maybe we can get you some little boots and play it off. <laughs> but yeah. Yes, yes. Um, he ate blueberries tonight, so I figured it out. I don't even know. I don't think I talked to you guys about this. I was over on Instagram with this madness about the feeding, but um, I have been hand feeding him blueberries, and I was just like, how do I get him the whole fruit so he can feed it himself, right? Because I didn't want him to choke on the blueberries. Muddling. I'm like, hello, lady who used to drink like it was going out of style. I have a muddler, so I took that and a strainer, and I just like beat up the... Um, the blueberries with it. Wait, I think I did a video. Hold on, I'll show you guys. Hang on one second, Katie. Uh -huh. Let me show them how I made your blueberries. Um, but yeah, it was like, oh my goodness. And he drank from a little cup. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I did. Um, play. Right? Oh God. Why is my phone not cooperating? Oh, here we go. It is playing. It's going to be. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's reflecting back. You can kind of see it. But you know, like how you muddle for mojitos or whatever, my little muddler and a strainer and that worked out and he loved it. So he got fresh. Um, thank you. Hey, Kay Francois. Um, thank you, Isha to go check on them, um, to be able to go check on them throughout day just feels more secure than cameras. I agree. Yeah. And especially because like, I, you know, I talked to the lactation consultant and she was saying, start feeding him more from bottles at home, start feeding him breast milk more from home via bottle so that he, it's not, you know, cause most of the day he's on the boob, like he may get one bottle a day here at home. And so just so, like that's not another new change on top of like new environment, new people. Um, so sort of like start doing that. So I think next week I'll start giving him multiple bottles during the day. It just means more work for me, but I also need to get in practice of pumping, um, 
to feed him for the following day. But yeah, you have 10 stacked in your bedroom right now. Oh my God. Do you stack them on top of each other or do they collapse into each other? I can't even imagine 10, although it would look neater than what I got going on. But it's just like, I have dreams of clearing everything out and then I'll just be stuck with those. What I'm going to use that one for is um, the decorations. I'm going to shout out, what is going on back there? <laughs> All the decorations. Um, yes. On top. Okay. Yeah. No, I have a terrace in my bedroom that I would like to be able to walk out of the door and enjoy the terrace in the morning. I haven't, I haven't been able to do that in, uh, some months now. Yeah. Right. Are you talking to Liberty and Justice? You liking your dogs? Yes. Yeah, you like Liberty when she's not fighting for your toys. Five stacked on five. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. But it's slowly coming together. I didn't vlog it the other two days because I'm like, it's so much to try to figure out how to shoot it and to clean it. And I was like, let me just get the cleaning done and I can do some after photos. I shot like some of it, but it's a whole other situation trying to... Um, trying to do that. And then I put this on him today because I was going to do our... our um, three and four month video, but that did not work out either. Cause I got stuck on the phone all day. Huh? Mom was on the phone. He napped through two of the calls. <laughs> oh my God. That's what helped me tremendously going back to work was buying extra pump parts, a little pricey, but I didn't have to stress about cleaning the pump parts and getting them all clean in between pump. Yeah. I have two pumps, so I'm planning on leaving one home and having one at work. So I'll do my night pump with the one at home and then obviously the day pump with what's at work. Um, I'll leave the Spectre here and I'll take the other one. But I guess, yeah, if I... Even for the work one, though, maybe I take two parts there, so I'll always have, like, a clean set. Did you just, like, take it to the kitchen and wash it? Oh, dang it. That's what I forgot. I asked HR about benefits enrollment today. I forgot to ask him about the lactation rooms. Like, I've actually never been in one, even though I've been on projects where we designed them. Uh, but my projects are still – I just got to write this down before I forget. Um, lactation rooms. I just haven't launched a project where it's alive and well and I can walk through it, but I've seen plans for them. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to remember if there's like a sink in there or not, or do I just like trot to the pantry and <laughs> wash it, my booby parts in front of, I mean, obviously not my boobs, the parts for the boobs um, in the pantry. Um, I could put them in the garage, but that doesn't work for me. I don't even have a garage, so, so you, you know, do what works for you. Yeah. The shorts of him eating his food was so cute. Oh, thank you. I have one more. I'm going to do the one with the blueberries because he drank his water. It's just, I've now officially become one of those moms. <laughs> um, out of sight, out of mind. Yes, yes. That's what got me into trouble, though, having all those storage, uh, all those things in storage, because it was literally out of sight, out of mind. And then I kept bringing more stuff into the house. I know what you meant. <laughs> I know what you meant, love, love. Um, I pumped in an unused bathroom that I was the only one using. It had a sink, and I just rinsed the parts and put them in a Ziploc bag. I took three sets of clean parts. Said, oh, nice. Yeah, I need to be in the room with the couch and the rocker and the dimmed lighting and some music playing. I guess I can put meditation music on my phone or or use one of my apps. But yeah, I need to like, I'm going to have to bring it all the way down. Um, our lactation room's always full. I work in a hospital. Most people go to empty patient rooms. So, oh, nice. I think ours are on a scheduler, like how you book conference rooms. Um, you book the lactation room. So I'm trying to get one like the same time every day. Luckily it's a big building. Um, so there's more, even if there's not one, like in my tower, there'll be some in the other towers. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, how many floors do we have? I think we have 78 floors. So somewhere in there, 78 floors in the main tower and my tower there, it goes up to, um, 16, 16 floors, but yeah. Um, oh God, it's going to be, yeah, that's going to be a whole thing. And looking at the baby pictures helped with milk flow. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, I know the women who are like, oh, I just wear my wearable pumps into meetings and everything else. They must have a great supply because there's no way I would be too stressed. Like just talking, I still end up like sweating in a room. There's no way milk is just going to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm coming out. Ooh, I got the world to show. No, they're not going to be doing none of that. So, uh, um, Arlette has a, a movie, has a video on returning to work, which she sent me the link. I didn't, I need to watch it uh, all the way through. I can't remember. I got distracted as I'm so want to do. Um, but yeah, it is. Yeah, I just, but luckily I think going back the week of Thanksgiving is the right decision because it's not a full week. One and two, it's not going to be a full schedule because everybody's not going to be there. A lot of people, I, if if I didn't have a baby this year, I would be taking that week off. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit quieter. Um, and I know ladies when they bring their kids to work and they have them down, like I mean, not to work when they bring them to the onsite backup care, they go have lunch with their kids. So I'm gonna be bringing lunch with me, <laughs> as in my boobs, and gonna go see him, just in case. Um, I mean. Yeah. Okay. Well, come over here so I can see you when you talk to me, sir. So you're not talking to the side of my head. What is it that you wanted to tell me? Oh, nothing. No, you just want to look at yourself. Who's that handsome little one? Is that you? Is that my sugar bear? It is. It sure is. In your little conductor outfit. He had on a bluebird, but he destroyed it while he was eating blueberries. <laughs> Didn't you? Didn't you? Um, yeah, he is, what is it? 26 uh, and a half inches. So almost 27 inches. And it's like, oh my God, he's going right to, to six to nine. Because this is a three to six. Um, he's like a long string bait. Um my co-workers wore those portable breast pumps. It was quiet at desk. You could hear this swishing. If it was quiet, you could hear the swishing sound, Ella. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I mean, I hear them on people's videos when they're like, they're so quiet. I'm like, sis, it's not as quiet as you think it is because I hear it. And then if I'm in a conference room, imagine me in a conference room with like eight other people, doors closed. It's quiet. I'm the only one talking and there's something up on the screen. The moment I stop talking, you're going to hear the swoosh. And I just don't feel like I'll be comfortable enough, like relaxed enough. You know what I mean? Because he's been here with me, like <laughs> snuggling on my boob and we're like looking at each other. He's going to sleep and it's just a whole different vibe. And so I just like, I'm like, mm. <laughs> I need a room. I need a quiet room, a quiet space somewhere. Um HR didn't tell you what benefits you will receive before and after you return. They were supposed to tell you this six months before you gave birth. I'm just curious. Well, um, no, they did not tell me. Uh, we Our HR is a little bit different. So like the HR person that sits, that actually handles the people part is not the same HR person that does the benefits. We have a whole other benefits team. And they didn't know I was pregnant six months before my delivery. Um, so, yeah. I didn't tell them. Um, until I was five months pregnant. So I only had five months left at that point. But I didn't have any interaction with HR at all about my pregnancy. I filed my claim through the benefits team. And um, I mean, they're telling me now because they sent me the email about the backup childcare. But it like as far as like somebody calling me, no, no. We I work for a really big uh, company. So they just have like a whole, I don't even think our benefits team the full benefits team sits in New York. I feel like they're in Philadelphia, honestly. But yeah, um, and I, they, I don't think they know exactly what you're going to need, but they sent me like a, an email. Actually, I think I printed it off. Okay, I'm going to get up. Don't laugh at my Christmas pants. Oh, doo -doo -doo. I'll show you. So yeah, the benefits team sent me, oh God, I printed off everything. Did I not print it out? No. Yeah, and I kind of knew about um, the backup daycare because <coughs> 
fellow employees have used it and have talked about it. And like I said, they go down and visit their kids at lunch. Um, but like the details, the costs, all of that. Nope, nope, and nope. But yeah. Okay. I swear. Let me put him down. I printed this out. <laughs> Something went round down the wrong way. Okay. Milestones, milestones. My tax stuff. No. I must have taken it off earlier and forgot about it. But to answer your question, no, they did not. <laughs> Um, how long do you do backup care? So I'm planning to do it for the month of December, but we get, um, 30 free days a year. And then the rest we would have to pay for if we needed additional ones. Um, and I'd say free because there's a $15 copay, but it's obviously less than if I was like, I was saying earlier, it would be $395 for the month of December. If I used every day for backup daycare with the $15 copay, if I was just to take him to brighter horizons on my own, it would be, um, in excess of 4,000. I think it's like $4,200. So it's a significant savings. Um, and he would be right in the building with me. Um, HR didn't really go into specifics either, but they were very supportive once I came back. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's contacted me because like recently, because I, um, I didn't realize we wouldn't accrue vacation when we were off. So I thought I was going to have, uh, 15 days and it turned out I only had eight days because I left at the end of May. So other than that, that was really the only time I talked to HR about my leave at all. Like my HR director. Um, yeah. Other than, you know, him telling me congratulations. <laughs> But like what time I wanted to take off and when I was returning and all of that was through the benefits team, not through my HR director. Since I moved to New Jersey, I realize NYC has better parental benefits. I'm learning a lot from you and other people. My first time getting benefits, I was lost. Nice. Yeah. I I mean, when I had Cheyenne, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, I didn't have that type of job where I had any benefits. So I was solely on the state benefits, which was like six weeks. Um and I paid for her hospital stay and my hospital stay with Medicare, Medicaid, whatever. I can't remember what it is in California. Not for the elderly because I was 23, whichever one that was. So, um, yeah. But like I said, I've worked in another place where they have had I, two other places where they've had um, Bright Horizons as an offering. And I'm sure there's other facilities that have that as well. Um, and the good thing is like Bright Horizons has different seminars. So I signed up for one about emotional intelligence and like how to teach children, you know, age appropriate conversations about dealing with their emotions. Um, and that's why I like Miss Monica too. I'm pointing because the TV is over here. He watches her in the morning. That's his um, guilty pleasure of his screen time for the day. And she goes over, you know, how are you feeling? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you, which I think is so important. Well, for me, it's important. It might be overly important for me because as a child, I was told like, I didn't know what I was feeling and shut up or I would have, uh, find out a reason to cry. Um, so I just want to make sure he's able to, especially as a male child to express himself, you know, because obviously one day he's going to have a lot of testosterone and I don't want him expressing himself with just his fist and like, all he knows is anger and nothing else. You know what I mean? Or that's all he knows how to express. Um, backup care is not a new thing. So I worked at Boston Consulting. Oh my God. In 1998 and 99, was it 90? Oh my God. It's all a blur. It might've even been before that. No, cause I was still going to school. Um, I want to say, yeah, 98 and 99. And they offered backup care at that time. They want you to get your ass to work, girl. It's also why they feed you. You know what I mean? They would always be like, people were like, oh, they give you guys lunch at work? Yeah, because they don't want us to go anywhere. It's not like, I mean, it's a nice perk, but it's the the subtext is sit your ass in here and get eat this food we bought for you. You don't need to go out to, uh, and they would be going out. What was it? There was a steak place, McCormick and Schmidt. So they were, you know, not me. But the big wigs would be going out uh, to McCormick and Schmidt's having those two martini lunches back in the day. Um, could he go longer if you wanted? Like, could he go for a year? He could go for a year if I at a different Bright Horizons, not the one in the building. But again, it's about forty two hundred dollars a month. 
I am capping off my childcare at thirty five hundred dollars a month, so forty two is out of my budget. Um, but yeah, that is just for this year, though. I mean, I'll get another thirty days come Jan one. So we'll see. I mean, maybe we'll make that a thing. Like every December, he goes to Bright Horizons. You know what I mean? Who knows? We'll figure it out. Um, hey, Storm Stevens, how are you? Good evening. Um, oh my goodness, sir. Oh, you're trying to get to Liberty? Oh, I cannot wait till you can crawl so you can chase her appropriately. Because she's got it coming. Does she take your bear? Oh, no, your bear is right here. That's why she's circling. Oh, but it's wet. She had it. Is that why you're trying to get to her? Her mouth was on the back part. She made the bear's booty wet. The bear's booty is wet? Who did that? Who did that? That was lit. Here she go. Here she comes. Uh-uh. You know this is not yours, right? You see, this is me. I'm in here like Snow White every day. Just talking and ain't nobody talking back. Uh -uh. Okay, I'm going to pop this up so you can sit up. Okay. Oh, that was funny. That was funny to you, sir. Okay, let's put your snuggle me up like that. You can sit like that. How's that? How's that, sir? Do you like that? And then here's a bear. So you can chew on the front now that Liberty chewed on the back. Oh my God. What I have a uh, Bachelor of Science in Management. I hope that's what you mean, like my college degree, not my temperature. Um, <laughs> from Pepperdine. I went to um, Pepperdine in California. Mine just started calling last month and is after my. Oh, really? Oh my God. I can't wait till she can get, until uh, he can get after her because she is always, always stealing his toys. And right now he thinks it's funny. Like he's always like, ah, or he just is like nonchalant about it. But um, I feel like those two are going to duke it out. Like this little one, that's justice. She's a little more motherly and she checks Liberty. This is Liberty. Um, but Liberty is like, who is this? When is he going back? And how come he gets all the new toys that come into the house? Because they used to get all the toys, right? Now they're like, well, at least she is. Justice could care less about his toys. Um Hey, no, you're not late. You're always on time. I'm um, glad you made it. Oh. Hey, are you trying to get this bear? Get away from me. <laughs> she just knocked me all in my back. This is not yours. This is Sugar Bear's. It's a bear. That should be your first hint. Oh, that's funny to you. Taylor, that's yours, huh? Say, so that belongs to me, Liberty. Uh. Right. <laughs> um... My baby wants my dog's toys and my dog wants my baby's toys. Oh my God. It's like, it's insane. Uh, and then I have the little wipes that I'm like, it's just a lot going on. He has a play mat now. Well, he had a play mat. I didn't realize it, it's called a little fence. It's not really a fence, but it's like a little, like the ends fold up. You know, those big giant tiles, the ends will fold up so he can't get out. And my intention was for them not to go in, but of course, Liberty doesn't respect any boundaries and hops over it. And then justice comes after her to tell her to get out. Um, but like his lovey, they want one of the loveys, like he got a white one. I'm looking around for it um, from his Bitsy box and the Liberty swears it's hers. The larger yellow one, I don't let him have, but, um, or her hat. Oh my God. I'm misgendering the cheerings. The dogs are girls. Sugar bear is a boy. <laughs> Are you barking at me? Do you, you think that's funny? I don't want her barking at me. <laughs> um, I've watched you a while, never knew what your field of study was. Oh yes, yeah, I it's in management. But I ended up, I have a certification in project management. So I am, it, well, yeah, I lead a lot of projects. I do projects and programs in our technical space, in our studios. But yes, I am also, well, I shouldn't even, I'm not going to say that out loud. I'll tell you guys when I, after I go back to work, but <laughs> there's, yeah, let me not put that out there. I was just reviewing my new parental benefits as well. Hope yours are great. I return to work January 2nd. Oh, nice, Mrs. K5. That's good. Yeah, I'm going back November 20th. That is my, I'm going back a week early, but I took six months. And the post, you know, the comeback benefits, I had not focused on at all. I mean, I spent so many time, so much time focusing on 
um, getting pregnant and what those benefits were. So now I'm like, okay, let me take a look at all the things that we have. Like I knew we had the lactation. We get a lactation consultant. She checks in with me every week, except last week I told her like, let's just check in when I get closer to going back to work, but check in every week. I got the free pump from that lactation, um, benefit separate from the pump you get from insurance. So that's how I have two pumps. I didn't pay for either one of them. Um, but the lactation consultant has been amazing, especially when I struggled in the beginning. And then um, having the backup care is amazing. Ah. Having them pay. Ah, ah, you stop barking at me. And definitely do not bark at the baby. Get down. Get down. Get down. You too. Because you're supposed to be watching her. Aren't you the big sister? Get down. Both of you. Down. 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 Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um... Yeah. And I knew we had backup care benefits because like I said, other ladies have come up with their children at lunchtime, but I, I, I get down. I didn't know like how many, how it worked, if there was a copay. Like I never, I mean, why would I like break my own heart finding out about stuff that I wasn't using? <laughs> And so, um, and the sitter city thing I didn't know about, which that is amazing, but that's also part of the bright horizon stuff. Um, yeah, so it's been good. And now I found out today, thanks to you guys, that they do cover doula services. So next time, what I'll do is find out who is pre-approved for the doula service, or who's in network, not pre-approved, who's in network, because now i got to file an out-of-network claim. And so if I find someone who's in network, I don't actually have to come out of pocket um, and wait for reimbursement. Are you doing the gangster lean over there? Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. I know. I see you getting uncomfortable. Hold on. You okay? You want to say hi again to the ladies? Um, yeah. And also benefits have not um, been chosen for next year. So that was one of the other things that you guys had asked me about. So I definitely, I talked to HR today. I just didn't ask them about the lactation rooms, um, what amenities they, the existing ones have and where they're located in our tower. Um, but yeah, benefits have not been selected. He said they would be sending something out. And I was like, I'm not, I don't think I'm, well, even if I am, I'm not checking corporate email. So I haven't even charged my work phone in at least three months. I think I charged it like when I got back from, I don't know, around my six week mark, I think, because I was sending pictures to people of him. Um, but yeah, so. I'll look at those benefits. I got to figure out what I want. Oh, and then I was looking at the 529 plans too. So, you know, they have where you can put uh, pre-tax, you can put money away for their college. So I want to um, pay into that for him and that it's pre-tax. So again, that is a tax savings for me. It's my taxes next year are going to be so lovely because I won't be um, a single person. I'll be head of household again. And so it'll be nice. I'll get more money in my pocket that I work for instead of giving it away. Um, Hey, Heather, how are you doing? I was thinking about you yesterday and your non-supportive relatives. I'm so sorry about that. Um, he looks like he could roll on out of the cuddle me and fix his own bottle. <laughs> he bet not. Oh, my God. But he was drinking water earlier out of his little cup. He's so funny. Um, I won't show you. I'm not. I don't want to be that much of that mom. Now they over there just need attention. You want to go play with them? You want to go play with them? Oh my goodness. The one thing that the pediatrician asked me to work on with him for this month is um, having him stand more, like put stand and put his weight on his feet because his feet are kind of like still curling in. What she said is what happens in the womb. But she was like, does he take weight on his feet? And I was like, no, unless I bring him up and then go boop and then he'll brace himself and he'll put his weight on there. But then he goes lax. Um, so to help him get, but that's like, really it um he's rolling over he rolls from his back to his belly and his belly to his back uh so i have to watch him i mean i always had to watch him but like the changing table because before i wasn't strapping him into the changing table now i have to make sure I, that he's strapped on there um yeah he's ready to shaboogie he's ready to i don't know about make a bottle but he's ready to get up and get going after these girls um 
let's see um i got new benefits with new job hopefully uh, fertility benefits my last job had none oh yeah hopefully you do have them that we were talking about that last time like when do you ask about the fertility benefits so i mean yeah i'm sure nobody was expecting me to be going out on maternity leave i think that's hilarious but you know they can't say anything they just say congratulations um at least to my face anyway who cares what they said behind my back I have to get going, but so glad. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm glad you made it too. Have a good night. Uh, anybody coming in on the replay crew who's not here with us live, I will have the chat on replay as well. So you can open up the chat and see what we talked about in case it doesn't come up on the screen. Um, if you're on the replay crew, drop a little heart. I always like to say hi. I like the blue hearts, but put any heart that your heart desires. Um, and then, yeah, I always like to say hi to the replay crew because I appreciate you. Um, yes, it's, I was, like I said, I was going to be on here earlier, um, like four o'clock again and, but I'm here now. Um, do you get compensated for not using a breast pump? I don't understand what that means. I don't get compensated for using or not using, like, why would they pay me? <laughs> why would they pay me to, to use a breast pump? I don't get it. Um, you should check out Stroller Strides. I don't know what that is. Stroller Stride? Is that a store? I need more information. Um, oh, I'm glad, Heather. I'm glad. Do you talk to a therapist? That's what I was thinking about, too. Like, I don't know if you have somebody to help you um, navigate people. It gets so messy with the fertility because obviously, you know, we all, well, a lot of us, I'm not going to put it on everybody, have already have our own drama with our families. And so then adding this on is like another level of complexity. And we're very vulnerable when we're going through these fertility things. And so it would be so nice if we had support. But I think if you know, you know, if you've tried and they haven't been supportive, like you have to figure out when to cut them off and like protect yourself. Like maybe you don't share that part or maybe you pull them aside and say like, it makes me uncomfortable when you ask or, you know, whatever it is. Um, Cause we are coming on that time of the year. And unfortunately I feel like it kicks up the most around the holidays cause everybody's together. You might have a drunk uncle in there. Uh, when are you having, you know, like it does get crazy. Good night, Lisa. Um, I seen the pics of sugar bear eating in my heart. Oh, thank you. And yeah, he's uh he's enjoying it. You, sir, you his nose is congested. Where is your spray? Hold on. Just give me one second, ladies. <laughs> I got a baby. I gotta fix his nose for him. Okay, sorry about that. I had to put saline in his nose. Now I'm gonna put a little mentholatum on there. There you go. <laughs> if you do the 529 for Sugar Bear, consider also doing a trust fund. I am looking into a trust fund um, because, you know, just in case I don't make it, I mean, let's keep it 100%. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking at that. And so that the benefits will go to him. My sister and her husband are going to be his godparents. So I just want to make sure, you know, they're not having a financial hardship. So, yeah, I got to talk to a lawyer. I'm probably going to use the same lawyer in Brooklyn that helped me when I was doing a known donor because um, he's a family he specializes in people who have uh, donor children. Let me say it like that. Connect with other mamas for a one hour workout and you'd work out while Sugar Bear is chilled in his stroll. Oh, let me write that down. Okay, stroller strides. I have a gym downstairs. It's on my list to like get going with um, like taking him down there with me and getting on the treadmill and lifting weights. I, have you guys seen the girls on Instagram with the weight lift? And I'm like, oh, look. What? I too can have a booty? <laughs> say less. Say less. Um, stroller strides. Let me. 
I had such a cute butt when I was pregnant. It's all gone. It all went to breastfeeding. Um, sir, I don't know why you want to chew on my arm. Um, stroller strides. Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds cool. And I'm right by Central Park, so we could do that. Although, I guess I did take the stroller, like, off roads. I think it can probably handle, yeah. Um... Like if they want to do outdoor stuff too. Mm. I have a therapist, but she reduced her hours and I can only have an appointment every... Oh, girl. Yes, get a new one. Oh, that makes it even worse. I'm so sorry to hear about your parents. The, they meet up at local parks and such. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we can go right on over to Central Park. And um, that sounds nice. I'll look it up. So is that like a nationwide thing? Um, you said your insurance gives breast pumps. If you decline to take it, will they compensate for not taking it? I was never offered a breast pump when I was on maternity. So I think that is a nationwide thing that they, uh, the insurance covers a breast pump. Um, I don't know that they'll compensate. I mean, I don't think they compensate you for any service that you don't take, right? Like if you have, I don't know, uh, an annual checkup is covered, like wellness checks are covered. And if you don't take, if you don't go to your wellness check, I don't think they compensate you for that, right? It's a service. It's kind of like use it or lose it. And then I also, the employer also offers lactation consultation. And as part of that, I got a free breast pump. But I don't, you could, somebody tell me on here, because I'm not the only one on here who has that benefit. Did anybody get compensated if they didn't take the breast pump? And why wouldn't you take it, I guess? If you're going back to work, how are you going to, if you're nursing and you're going back to work, or are you saying if you're not nursing and you want the money since you don't need a breast pump? I don't know, honey. But no, I that wasn't something I inquired about because I, I needed my breast pump. Um, but maybe somebody else knows. And I almost was going to do, which they covered, I almost was going to do a rental. I was looking into that because they have the hospital grade or the exact hospital medulla. I could have rented it to help build up my supply, but it ended up, uh, I did the power pumping and that ended up being sufficient. So I didn't have to worry about it because um, there's like places that rent the the hospital grade ones. And, and medulla was the one I had while I was in the hospital and I liked that one. So it was like super duper. I mean, I was impressed. That was my first time ever using an uh, electric breast pump. Like when I had Cheyenne, there was only manual breast pumps. And so that was at least consumer wise. And so I definitely did wasn't offered a breast pump in the hospital when I had her. But she latched right away and my milk came in. So it was it was a different situation. But yeah, um, there's they want you to be successful. Hello, Elaine, you made it. Um, I'm here. I'm here. I know I was going to do a video today. I need to put my nails on. I need to like judge myself up a little bit, pretend like I have some eyebrows. Um, but yeah, I do have videos planned for this week um, that we're going to record. Today was supposed to be a recording day, but I took care of parental leave uh, priorities as far as coverage. Um, yeah, so I don't know, um, Kay Francois. I think you would have to ask your employer. I don't think so, though. I think it's like, I do believe it's a use it or lose it. Because um, I'm sure they have some kind of like, they're not paying retail for it. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think they're just trying to support because so many women have uh, struggles with breastfeeding. I think they're just trying to support moms. Like, don't let that be the reason why you don't try this. Um, an estate attorney rather than a family attorney. I did my baby's trust with an estate lawyer. Good to have someone who knows estate specifically estates for single mom. Uh, okay. So I will look for that then. Yeah. As long as it's someone who's familiar with like the donor child um that's what i just want to make sure because the laws there's a lot of gray still around the laws and they end up like you have to infer one from the other and look at cases i just want to make sure it holds up because i'll be dead when they're trying to sort it out you know what i mean uh i was never informed of breast per pump i purchased my own i know it's stupid but want to prepare for what i did before yeah i mean i would ask your employer right um 
whoever it is that handles your benefits, I would definitely ask them about it. That was something that they told me about. They proactively reached out to me because I was actually confused about it because I was like, it was a specific breast pump they were given for the consultation or for the, with the lactation consultant service. And I was like, oh, I don't even get to pick my own. And they're like, no, no, you'll still get to pick the one that's covered by insurance. But as part of this um, service, we, you get this breast pump. So I ended up getting two because of my employer. Right. So, but I feel like what year did you end up paying for your own? Because I feel like that's a, well, no, maybe it came out under like Obama, the Affordable Care Act stuff. But I feel like that's a requirement for employers who have X amount of employees. Like they have, I just can't ever, I don't know. I always have, I feel like worked where they gave out breast bumps and I wasn't even like, as far as once I had a career, um, not when I was working at Little Caesars, which is where I was working when I had Cheyenne. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But maybe they can reimburse you too, if you've already paid for it. I don't know how long ago this was for UK Francois, but definitely talk to somebody at your job. They all have all the answers. I wondered about that. How could you ensure the money is not abused in case something happens? Do you need a legal person to distribute funds to the child? Right. Like I would, there would have to be a trustee, um, to disperse it. I mean, not that I don't trust my sister, but it's fine. And then also like at work, all of my life insurance, he's the beneficiary, but obviously if God forbid, if something happens to me and I pass away before he turns 18, like that would also need to go into the trust so that, you know, it doesn't go to him until he's 18. And I know like my aunt did that for her granddaughter, but even that got a little messy with the distributions. Um, and then nobody told her like when she was 18, that this money was waiting for her. It was very, it was a messy. So, um, you assign who you want to be the trustee. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. I just want to make sure it's done right. Cause I'm in New York, they're in California. Um, and you know, when push comes to shove and it actually has to be executed, I won't be here. So I just want to make sure everything is accounted for. That's why I track all the laws like around fertility, abortion, et cetera. Cause people are like, why are you tracking this? That doesn't have anything. Aha. Uh -huh, it does. Because like, if they change when life begins, that even changes like the status of our frozen embryos, right? Like all of it is intertwined. You can't have like two separate rules. And even most like Catholicism in, does not support IVF, right? Because they feel like you're essentially killing a baby if you discard your embryos. So all of that you got to stay up on. But so then the 529 would also be part of the trust. Is that where you're... Cause I have an appointment cause we also get like, um, I'm going to say free, but of course I want you to buy something. We get financial advisors. Um, so that's who I was going to talk to about the 529. Like I was printing, that's what I had on the printer. I printed all that stuff out from Fidelity. Um, yeah, I got to look at all that and make him like the beneficiary of my stock. It used to be for the longest time, it was my sister and it was Cheyenne. But when my sister got married, I took her off. And then Cheyenne is partner is boot up. So he's here. I'm like, really, if something happens, he's going to need the money. Um, so yeah. But sometimes the money does get abused, Heather. I mean, you have cases like I've had friends who have had to sue like either the, mainly for their parents like elder abuse where the funds were misused or somebody was made the trustee, like one of the other children and was like spending all the money on them and the parents was eating like dog food. And so one of my um, friends from LA, like she had to sue her brother and it took a long time just to, you know, and thank God her dad lived through it all. Cause the quality of care he was getting, like he didn't want to put him in a home. He had him in, they were living together, but he was really not taking care of him properly. You know what I mean? So like, the, I want the money to go to him being taken care of. Not that I don't trust my sister, but it, you know, or her husband, but anything could happen. And then how does it, what happens if they get divorced? You know, all of those things. That's why I was thinking family law too. I just want to make sure the bases are covered because, you know, hopefully you never need it, but it's better to like have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That was like one of the things when my mom got sick in 2020, we were like going through, it was morbid, but I'm like, oh, it makes sense. Like, let's do it now. Um, we're a little sad now, but when you're, 
when the death happens, you don't want to be doing all that. I also need to do my own funeral plans because I don't want anybody to have to do that, which I haven't done yet. But that's like my mom did that of like what she wanted. Um, Sounds so morbid. But, you know, like just put it away so people can just grieve and not have to stress. Um, Because I don't want nobody on a GoFundMe trying to give me a bless you, trying to put me in a pine box uh, in an unmarked grave, baby. Um, 529 is separate, but there's a way to connect it to the trust phone and the lawyer could, would better explain. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah. Because I was looking, like I said, I was on fidelity.com. I was actually looking at my stock allocation. Our stocks are going up, uh, which was good. That's the first increase I've seen since I've been on leave, I think. But anyway, um, yeah. And it's a tax break for me. I mean, I'm going to keep it a buck. That is, hey, Michelle, how are you? So there's so many, you know, different things going on with the little ones. And I haven't had a little, little one in forever. Uh, And I could have definitely put more away for Cheyenne. Although she didn't really, like, she went to community college. She wasn't really into college. I don't know if he will, too. Like, we'll figure that out. But better to have it again and not need it. Because these are the, the, I'm at the period in my life where I'm going to make the most that I ever make, right? And so I might as well maximize that. Yes. Yes. Whew. Yeah, there's so many things between breast pumps, uh, nurseries, and all that fun stuff. And all of them, I don't know if like that's a regulatory thing, but all the schools that I've talked to, it's a ratio. It's like one teacher to every four students, which I think is good when they're this age. Now, I haven't asked. I should ask about that. Once they hit a year old, I know the cost goes down, so it must be a different ratio of um, of how many children per uh, provider. And most of them seem to follow like Montessori-esque things. Although Goddard, which is where he's going, has like their own. It's not really, because I've looked it up, it's not an official type of learning, like how Montessori is. But they do, it's similar, like natural things, things that the children will engage with. Um, I was just talking about that earlier, like uh, different gifts for him, because I want him to have toys that, he interacts with and not that he just watches right and so like he should be having to exert some effort so that it helps with his development so i've looked for that in schools you know i know some places like a lot of like bright shiny plasticky like i'm not looking for that the more natural it is the more child friendly it is so like the cubbies are low so they can hang up their own coat and put up their own shoes you know what i mean where it's like child friendly I'm even trying to figure out how to do that in his room. But again, I have a feeling I won't be here past next year. But, um, you know, so he can go in and select his own clothes in the morning. I'm trying to, like, give him this independence. While I'm here, it'll, one, it, I think it's just healthier for him. But two, when the second one comes, the more independent he is, the better. And then I raise the other one to be as independent as possible while I'm here. Um, and independent in a way of, like, not go figure it out yourself. But empowered of like, oh, I can do this. Like I can pick out my own clothes. I can feed myself, you know? Um, I just, I think that's important so that they know as early as possible that they have agency. Um, my kid, uh oh, hold on. Wait, what? something I don't trust. And I don't trust her and I want to do it Evis on her and have her touch the phones when she is 30. Maybe Elvis. Um, this generation is crazy. Oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, I told my sister that I would like to skip the funeral because people fight over everything, even who rides in the limo, just carriage to my burial site and let me rest. Ain't that the truth, Heather? Oh my God. There I've, yeah, I want to say the last two funerals. I, I won't say it's a fight, fight, but people were terse of like, you can't ride in that limo. And blah, blah, blah. Girl, just, I don't want to ride in anybody's limo. Like, sis, you driving? Okay, let's follow. Because you know what? I want to go when I'm ready to go. I, I don't want to be in an awkward situation with people saying random shit. Like, oh, everything happens for a reason. Like, save it, Ponchi. Um, Yeah. 
I type fast. I want to construct the trust fund for my child child to get access at 30. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, one to four for infants and one to six. Okay, good. I researched the area daycares, but ended up going with a nanny instead when I went back to work at six months. But I thought that was a great... I think that is too. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I'm debating. Like, I want to do half and half, but then... If I do half and half, I have to go to a different school. I looked at one, um, Vivio, which is closer to my job than closer to home. Um, and they will do uh, either a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule or a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. And then I would have somebody in the home the other days. I'm worried about his socialization, though, especially if he ends up being an only child. Like sometimes I feel like no offense to any only children. Some of y'all can be a little strange. <laughs> and I say that as a strange person myself. <laughs> I'm semi an only child because my brother didn't come alone until I was like six. So um, Elvis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you meant Elvis. Yeah. So, okay. So one to four is good. Cause I, um, I know when I posted that video, some people seem shocked that it was one to four, but they're not, I don't know what, what their frame of reference was. Cause I thought that was excellent, you know, cause they're changing diapers and everything and they got to be on a schedule. Um, all of the places have apps, which is great. And they, you know, send you little notes and pictures throughout the day of what's happening when, and then they tell you what they learned. So, or what they went over so you can, um, you know, reinforce it at home, which I think is great. Because the only thing with the sitter is I feel like it like someone coming into the house, depending on their level, obviously it costs more, but I wouldn't want them sitting around like putting my baby in a chair and turning on a TV. Like I would lose my mind. Um, they need to be doing some activity. So I talked to someone who had a person come in. Um, she was twins and she was saying she did the lesson plans for them. So that's an additional thing. You know what I mean? Like, cause we've been doing it at home. I print out his milestones and go over like, different exercises. So to make sure he's hitting his marks, um, for like gross motor skills, fine motor skills, communication, um, all of those things. So yeah, it's, I just want to make sure he continues to do that and not like be a vegetable, especially the first year is super important. The first seven are all formative, but that first one is so like, it sets the foundation for everything. Um, yeah. It depends. So I can't even say on average, it depends. I've seen from, well, I'm looking at part-time. So I've seen they, they're paid by the hour, like between 15 and $30 an hour, depending on like what their experience is. Uh. If you want them to teach a different language. Um, yeah, it just depends. Um, I looked at, oh, you did. Okay. I was going to do a similar split, but ultimately decided to do nanny until preschool and skip daycare. Right. That makes sense. All great options. It's just about what feels best to you. So yeah. And they're closer to my job. So I feel like if, you know, God forbid Manhattan shut down for whatever reason, I could get to him faster than if I choose one closer to the house. That just means though, if I take a day off and like to do something personal and want to have him at daycare, I got to go all the way to Midtown. So that was my other thing um, because technically I can work from home on Monday and Friday. I say technically, cause sometimes I just have to be there. There's things going on that require me to be there. So I was like, if I have a nanny come in a babysitter, nanny, whatever. Um, I, I don't, I don't know why I'm opposed to the word nanny. It sounds so horrible, but um, if I have a person, a caretaker, a care provider come in, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll also be here on Monday and Friday, right? And then Tuesday, Thursday, he would go to the center and I would take him to school. Like that is what feels right to me right now. But I have got to really wait and see how he responds. Like when he goes to the backup daycare in November for those three days and see like, what is that like for him? Like he may love it. He may love it. He's like such a little flirt and loves like to interact with people. And I figured out when we traveled, cause I'm thinking, oh, he's going to smile at everybody. Cause he's always smiling, but he can tell, like he picks up energy. Like one lady was on the plane fussing about people being loud or whatever. And he just started crying. Like he hadn't cried the whole time. He did not like her. He did not like her energy. So I feel like if he's uncomfortable, he will communicate in his way to me that he's not comfortable. So I trust that. Um, cause I would love to him to hang out with other kids because you know how they say like some kids, like the second child when they're closer in age will develop faster because they see 
the first child, like walking, crawling. And so they have that, like it's that behavior is immediately modeled for them, like more identifiable than me walking. Right. Cause I've always walked for him. Um, and so like if someone else, if an infant sees a toddler walking, it's more of a connection of like, oh, I could do that too, you know, versus a parent doing it. So that was what I was kind of thinking. And he likes to talk a lot already. Like he's going to be a talker. He's always babbling. So like the more people to babble to, the better. Um, other little children, you know, that's what I was thinking. I think that is what makes sense, but we'll see. We will see. I have options. I have lots of options and I have time. So, and no matter what decision I make, it's not like it's written in stone. I can change it at any time. So that is also, uh, I think I only have to give 30 day notice for if I change schedule or change my mind or whatever. So yeah. Department of education to get lesson plans for your child and use that as a template to enforce the child care facility lesson plan. Oh, I don't know about the department of education, like no offense, but, um, yeah. <laughs> I um, I don't have a lot of faith in the government. <laughs> I'm sure they're all nice people, but yeah. But I'll look. I'll see what it is. I've just been doing... I mean, I've been doing my own research. There's books and other things, too. Yeah. Okay. You ready for me to get off of here? Yep. I understand. Okay. Hold on. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> Wait. Um... La la la. La la la. Yes, okay. Because so far at home, you know, we've, like I said, I've been doing his um, lessons here. And so far it's been good. He's been ahead. Like he's ahead. He all of his four month milestones he was already doing before four months except for the putting weight on his feet. Um, but everything else, like yeah, we'll see. Sunshine, what state are you in? Did you already say that? Um, I wonder. And then K Francois, are you pregnant right now? Is that what I understand? Because you're saying you bought, you already brought your own breast pump, uh, or you mean for your 15 year old, you bought your breast pump? Uh, but yeah, there's there's so many options. It's all it's a it can be a lot. Uh oh, now the neighbors out in the hallway. It's 10 o'clock at night. There's a big sign that says "Do not do, put your trash out after 10." I guess he figured 10 or 9. I still got time. Uh. A lot of people who do homeschool, that's why I mentioned it. Okay. For infants? Oh, you're at NYC. Okay. Nice. So, yeah, I looked at the, uh, I think it's on 42nd Street, the VV I looked at. Whichever one, I think it's like an 8th Ave, like near Hudson, near the Hudson. I don't know. It was a nice lady though. I did it virtually and I did the, um, she did a nice tour. Um, I like that they take their shoes off on the outside. She showed me like the children's room, the, it just had everything I was looking for. If I go into a place and I just see a bunch of like rainbow plastic stuff, I'm headed out the door. It's not for me. <laughs> um, some neighbors I know it is. They're new. They moved in um, while I was delivering, while I was in the hospital after delivery. And, um, you know, my other neighbor, he was a renter. He left. He was the cardiologist. He got a place like downtown. He wanted to be in a hip, cool place. He was quiet and he was hardly ever here. Like he had a place in the Hamptons too. So he would be, but the dogs knew him. So they weren't like every time he came in and out, they weren't, and he was barely here. Um, they weren't going crazy. The dogs don't know them yet. So they go crazy. Like they're starting to get to know them now. What are we like three, four months in? But Liberty alerted and she got up and went to there. But when she figured out it was them, she didn't bark. But at first I've got a newborn. I've got two dogs who are terriers. So they're protecting the house. Every time they heard a noise, they would get up and bark like crazy. And then he would wake up. So that was no bueno. Um, it was, oh my God. Yeah, that was so painful. 
And it's a clear sign on there because we're on the 10th floor. I mean, I guess if you're, unless you're on the first floor, it's really going to do the same thing. But there's a sign, this is not after 10, because it makes noise like going down the chute. It's in a closet, but it's still like, especially if you're doing glass, right? Um, or not glass, because glass goes in a bucket. If you're doing the um, the clear bags with the bottles the the plastic bottles and the aluminum cans and it just ding 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 so it's making that noise they're barking it's just like please 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 um and then they also have a thing where they put their shoes on outside so they'll have a little conversation out there while they're putting on or taking off their shoes and then a week ago or two weeks ago they got a dog so we just we got to get used to each other um now, when that happens, see, I would be, if Cheyenne was here, she would know. She would do it. Am I supposed to introduce myself to the new neighbors? Do they, inter like, am I supposed to welcome them? Because I don't know their names. I've said hi to them. I haven't been rude, but I don't know their names. Do I need to know their names? Um, I'm sure they're, like, wondering. Like, there's, it's only me and the dogs and the baby, and I'm here all day. They're, I'm sure they're, like, because hmm. they have their little ring doorbell. <laughs> I was outside earlier in my striped pants, but, yeah. Ah, oh, the, the New Yorkness. Luckily, there's only one other person, uh, one other unit up here. So I only have to deal with that. I'll, I'll figure it out. But when I lived in LA, Cheyenne made great friends with our neighbors. And I don't think, I, well, I know for sure if she wasn't there, I probably would have never really like hung out with them. But we ended up being great friends. Um, their son would come over and spend the night. She would go over there and spend the night. Um, we would do barbecues and stuff together. Like I would go to their family event, you know what I mean? So it ended up being a great thing, but it was Cheyenne who was like, hi, I'm Cheyenne. And I, it just, I'm not that kind of person. So um, introduce yourself when you see them. Okay. I will do that. I never see them both at the same time, but I'll, one at a time I'll introduce, um, I'll introduce myself. I'm not making pie though. As long as I don't have to go over with an apple pie. <laughs> I did make brownies, but those are for me. Yeah. So, okay. I'll do that. Because I'm like, how does this go? I just don't. It's hard because I've never gone anywhere where the neighbors have welcomed me or, or introduced themselves to me when I was coming. But I feel like I see that in the movies. That's got to be a thing. Um, yeah. No pies. Okay, good. So yeah, um, you have a baby, you need the pie, exactly. I need all the pie, all the calories that I can get. So yeah, that was it. I just wanted to update you guys on what happened today. Thank you guys for your information and input of having me call about the benefits and the different stuff. I would have never thought to ask about the doula being covered. Like that psh, went right over my head. So thank you guys for mentioning that. And it is gonna be some kind of cover, so I'm gonna get some money back, so that's good. And then I'll know for next time. Oh my God. Can you guys imagine? Let's just, let's imagine it. Um, whether you believe in manifestation or you believe in prayer or you believe in both, you know, amen means, and so it shall be right. So to me, that is also like a meditation. Um, you're meditating to the almighty of like what you want. Um, but like this time next year, I could be pregnant. I could have a one-year-old and a baby on the way which is mind blowing. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing in my vision. That's the energy I'm putting out, which also is why I really, really need to declutter, um, and just get it together. Cause we gonna have to have a system <laughs> with two little ones running around. We gonna have to have a system. Well, four, I'm already outnumbered between the dogs and the, but he'll be walking by then. And all that fun stuff. So yeah, this time last year, I was what, three weeks pregnant, four weeks pregnant. This time next year, I could be three or four. Hopefully I'm further along. Hopefully it happens in the summertime. Um, I do, I plan to talk to the RE in March, but I got to figure out the whole, can I lactate well or not? I know some people are saying like, it doesn't prolactin could interfere. I need to talk to the specialist. I need to talk to the to the doctor and see. Um, hey, Six Bows is back. Welcome. Um, I usually just smile and wave and keep it moving with the neighbors. Okay. It, you know, it's only the 
two units up here. So I'm going to see them a lot between going to the shoot and getting on the elevator. Um, they just seem to be way more around than, uh, Lon who was here. Lon was closer to my age though. So, and, but again, Cheyenne made friends with him first. And then I was like, Oh, Hey. And then, um, he was asking me where I was originally from. I was like, Fresno. He was like, you don't look like you're from Fresno. I was like, I don't know what that means. He was like, oh, my first wife was from Fresno. I'm like, okay, I guess I don't look like his first wife. But, you know, then we got to chopping it up. And he was uh, able to convince Cheyenne to get her COVID vaccine because I had been talking to her about it. And, you know, I'm just her mom. But he was a doctor. He's a doctor. And so he was explaining to her, like, the risk that he that she's putting herself in and others in. Um, and so she went ahead and got it like, cause our family, one, um, uh, my sister is immunocompromised. So like, you're not going to be able to go around her. And then my mom at that time was immunocompromised. So it, I mean, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to get into viruses thing other than to say that I got an email from the pediatrician today. She had talked about it when I, when we went last week for his four month, but they're going to start doing vaccinations for children, but you, they have to be six months. So I'm going to see in December about getting him. It's an MRNA, the same that I had, um, for COVID that and RSV, but she said the RSV, um, hasn't been approved by insurance because of the cost yet. So they are not announcing it broadly, but I'm like, as long as. By the time he is going out to see strange little sticky finger children every day, as long as he has it by then, I'm fine. Laura, hello, how are you? Um, so, oh, six poses, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Oh, we have two Sarahs in here now. Uh, I'm looking at next summer to TTC for number two also. Amen. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. So like I said, I'm going to start my workups in March and I want to find out about like lactation and all of that. Cause I would like to nurse him for at least a year. And the, uh, MFM was saying I need to, I can start no earlier than his ninth month. So ninth, his ninth month is in March, but I want to breastfeed him until um, June, he was born June 2nd. So I figure, you know, you still got to get all of your workups. Um, like maybe they need a saline sauna. I don't know, uh, whatever they might need check in all parts of the hoo-ha. Um, and then somebody needs to check on the fibroid because the lat, like right before my transfer, they found like a two by two by one point, like nine, fibroid in there. And then also, um, the adenomyosis. So all, you know, getting all of that stuff checked, I'm eating healthy now, but I'll probably have to like increase my vitamins. Cause I'm going to need that for the potential baby or the, not the potential, the coming baby and this baby. And so what does that look like nutritionally? I might have to make a point, an appointment with the nutritionist too. Um, that's another benefit we get, whether you're pregnant or not, you get, um, it's free or it's included in the benefits. I shouldn't say it's free. It's included in our benefits. There's no out of pocket costs for me to talk to the nutritionist. So I think I'll do that again and then start an acupuncture and all of that. Although this time everything's going to be more expensive because every time I go to an appointment, I've got to pay for a babysitter. Um, not that it's the end of the world, but I have to like, just be a little more judicious about like appointments when and where, um, and not going overboard about it. Cause I don't want to be in here eating ramen noodles and I don't want to mess with my baby's sweat, Laura, my baby's what <laughs> Cheerio money. <laughs> Wait. Um, I think they approved RSVP vaccine for elderly before peds. Oh, interesting. I mean, I, that probably, people are probably like leery of it. Some people for their kids who haven't read the data on it. So yeah. Hey, Patricia. Hello. How are you? Um, there's once upon a child in Scarsdale. Scarsdale is not next to me at all. I would have to take an Uber up there, right? Because I don't drive. Um, but yeah, I am in Harlem. Um, just has to be careful around other people, uh, about the vaccine you mean, or just, um, which, what do you mean? Anderia? Is it Anderia? Anderia? Um, I love the chat, learned a lot. Yes, our community likes to share, which I appreciate about it because I learned so much from you guys, like things I would have not thought of at all. Um, so I always appreciate you guys and I appreciate you commenting and sharing. It helps me, it helps others, so that's good. 
it's much harder now with a baby, but I love hearing you talk about how you are still taking care of you during this time and preparing for what's next. Yes. I mean, you know, it's that old thing of like, you got to put on your own life mask first. Um, but yes, the Cheerio money. Um, okay. So around other people, if you don't have the vaccine, is that what you're saying? I'm going to be sending him out to daycare though. So he's going to be around, he'll have, um, eight, other or seven other children in his classroom. So I don't know. I mean, all, everybody, everybody, the internet is telling me like, oh, wait till they go to daycare. They're going to come on with so many germs. I don't know why anybody would tell that to a woman who's a germaphobe and has anxiety, but you know, hey, people love me. <laughs> they love me. Um, so yeah, I'm just like a little bit, anything I can do to arm him, I'm going to do it. You know, like I don't want to see him miserable. I damn sure don't want to see him in ICU. So good night, K Francois. All right. Yeah, it's almost 1030. So I think I'm going to wrap it up. We've been on here for like an hour and 22 minutes. Uh, at Replay crew, if you made it this far, drop a blue heart in the comments. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys. As always, I'm here. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Oh, I'm on TikTok now too. Simply Tanika. I got 100 followers over there. <laughs> It's mostly Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear technically has 100 followers. Um, and I also just joined, uh, oh my God, what is the thing on Instagram that's like X, but it's threads. I'm also on threads. So I've been over there mostly doing motivational things and reposting other people's motivational things because that just lifts me up. So reach out if you need me, ladies. I'm always around. <laughs> I love you all. I will talk to you later. Uh oh, wait, one more. Um, I've learned so much from this community and y'all commenting honestly more than I've learned in a doctor's office. Anecdotal findings are so important in understudied areas, fertility. Absolutely. Collectively, we know more than some of the doctors, like for real, for real. You know what I mean? But yeah, we are stronger and better together. I definitely believe in that. All right, ladies, I'll talk to you later. Baby does to you all. Oh.